we are going to jump into questions submitted by you, the community, over the last 24 hours or so. And we're starting uh, actually from within fun. Audrey from our New England recap crew uh, asks, what are your build season plans? Uh, Northeast. I'm not sure what I said. Oh, I said New England. Uh, Northeast recap crew. Uh, what are your build season plans for next year? Uh, what are you going to change uh, as far with with not having the bag? Any any plans for that, guys? Um, um what I'm excited about personally is <laughs> not fighting over the programmers to practice driving. That's been pretty much the thing that's like, no, we need it for programming. No, we need it for drive practice. That's what I'm mainly excited about. But other than that, I'm not sure what's going to happen. So so you guys will probably still build two robots then it sounds like. Oh yeah. Yeah, the prototype gets beat up so bad during you know i run it into walls and jack <laughs> just destroys the thing um and yep. so we definitely need two robots <laughs> broke tonight yeah <laughs> we wrecked it tonight again yeah. yeah i think yeah the two the the two robot thing will be important because robots will wear down and you'll find out how quickly they wear down um as far as our schedule goes i don't we haven't really talked in depth about how we're going to change the schedule on how we build it. We still want to get the prototype robot done quickly and get the comp robot done quickly. But the the plan is to treat it just like there was a bag, only there won't be a bag. And we're also mm. excited about not having to rapidly implement the robot at competitions. We can do that before we get to competitions. That's bit us quite a few times trying to implement new toys at the events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds great. Sounds sounds pretty similar to what we're thinking too. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. And I think being in Michigan, I think we do have a little bit of an advantage because I think most teams in Michigan end up playing a lot more than a lot of other teams across the country. So like as far as like the wear and tear you guys mentioned, like I feel like all of us in Michigan kind of have already a little bit better feel for like how mm -hmm. much robots can wear down because of how much you end up playing. So, yep. yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, our next question comes from C. McBride uh, from 166 and uh, also on our Northeast Recap crew uh, asks, what made you guys go to Swerve instead of Tank West Coast Drive when you first uh, started doing Swerve? I don't think Shirsten or Roberts will know this answer because it predates them. Yep. Um, How many years has it been? Five, five years now? 2012 was the it was even before I was even on the team. Um, 2012 oh. was the first year that Strikeforce ran Swerve. And oh. from what I've talked to the, uh, the elders on the team, um, it essentially came from, I think 141 had a swerve drive in 2011 that had a sim inside of a wheel. I think Aaron Hill did one similar to it, but anyways, um, oh, very, I'm was, very, I'm very familiar with that. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, uh, that was the big inspiration to say swerve. It's like, if there's a drivetrain you need to master, that would be good in a lot of games for FRC. Uh, Swerve Drive is the one, um, and that is what kicked it all off. And so we've been doing Swerve ever since, and we'll probably keep doing it until you know a game like Stronghold comes out and is would wreck Swerve Drives. All right. Uh, next question comes from another member of the Fun Crew. Fun to really cream out for uh, Strike Force tonight. Uh, PJ from our Infimidation Crew, uh, Fim uh, Volunteer Extraordinaire asks. Following from above, what are you going to do now that your driver for the last four years has graduated? Will that affect whether you keep doing Swerve or is it irrelevant? Uh, we're definitely doing Swerve, hopefully, again. Um, and the only difference is that we'll retune. Um, we have several knobs to turn on the Swerve drive um, for different drivers. So Jack really liked to drive fast and drive. So we tuned it really hot for him. Um, but we can always tune it down for a new driver as they get used to the controls. Cool. Yep. Uh, next question comes from, I think it's Dare from 2655, asks, how does using Swerve change the mindset of your driving, whether it's scoring or while defending or being defended? I know, I know. I know, I know Jack, your driver's not here. Like, but. like Jack's not on. Um, uh, you, right, it's field-oriented, right? So there's no really front to the robot, so you can implement all sides of the robot for providing force. So for on defense, it's a lot easier to box people out um, and play the position game. If you have a swerve drive, you shouldn't be getting in pushing matches. You should be playing position game. And you can do that on offense as well. Uh, 
trying to outmaneuver the other guy. You, you see us do a lot of like pick and rolls on people where we get on them and then all of a sudden we do like a running back pick and roll to get around them. So trying to use that versatility in the swerve drive compared to a tank is what has been key for Jack. And, and maybe like a follow up on that um, is do, do you guys like have any special controls on the driver interface where you know, obviously you can translate and turn. Uh, do you guys have any like spin move buttons where like it can pivot not, you know, off the center of the robot, but like off the front corner or something like that to help with kind of like doing spin moves? Or is it just generally just, you know, doing normal controls to, to make that kind of thing happen? No, nope. all of the rotation is done off the center. Um, okay. We did some work last year over the summer about moving the center of rotation, um, being able to do that. But we this year, it's just straight on the center. Okay, cool. Uh, the next question comes from LC910. I'm assuming from 910. Uh, they would like to ask uh, kind of a two-part question. Uh, one, what was the thought process behind keeping 775 Pro motors over the Neos that most teams switch to? I wouldn't say most. I think that's a mischaracterization. But uh, And then the second part is, what was the thought process behind using your custom uh, with what seems like a f custom... With what seems like a, I'm assuming custom sword module, with what seems like a fairly complex build process over more traditional wheels such as Colson's Cots. Okay, so he's talking about the wheels. Oh, I talk about the custom wheels. So, so why, yeah, why using custom wheels instead of a more traditional wheel? And then the, the first part was uh, why the 775 is still over Neos. Sure, so can you cover? The, can you go ahead, Roberts? Um, so on the wheels, last year we used the I think a two and a half inch Colson's, um, and we were driving them really far distance during our autonomous um, routines during the paths and we would see five to six percent error on the distance and with the new wheels we cut that down to with the new treads we can cut the error down to about one and a half percent so it's been really nice on the software side and then the uh the 775s versus neos who wants to take that part Sirsten, can you talk about that um I can talk about it a little bit. Uh, with the, I think part of it was that Neos were newer and we already knew about 775 Pros. And so we didn't want to switch something yet because it. Uh, we wanted to see how they performed first. That's yep. pretty much all I know. No, that's right. It's They're, they're just new. We were mm -hmm. comfortable with the Pros. Um, the other thing was weight savings. We didn't a lot of teams that went from Sims to Neo saw big weight savings. We didn't see big weight savings going from the Pro to the Neo. And you just give me a year to tune the things in. Sure. All right. Our next question, our next question comes from uh, Neo Crow or yeah, Neo Crow Preacher, I think, uh, from 313. Necro Preacher. It's got an extra letter Necro. in there, though, so I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, from 313 asks, how do you keep your team from getting overconfident because of your success? Also, what sorts of things does 2767 do to continue improving throughout the season? So we've kind of hit on the second part a little bit already, but uh, maybe you guys can talk about staying level-headed, I guess. Well, I know that we're always kept in check because things often break on a robot. Um, and if you see us at a competition, we're almost always thrashing about and fixing things um, because something's always broken. And Well, this year so specifically. Might yeah, this, <laughs> like, exactly. this um, one was a drama queen. Yeah, yeah. So we might be successful, but we also work really, really hard to make every, make sure everything's perfect. Back to that perfection you guys talked about earlier. Uh, all right, our next question comes from uh, Alex Richards from 48. Asks, uh, is suction something you'd go back to in future seasons? Oh, man. That's exactly <laughs> what made the robot a drama queen. Um, I was going to that's what my guess was. <laughs> Um, I don't know, Sherson, would you want to go suction again? I would actively say no to suction again, <laughs> just because of how many problems we've had with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we can find anything, I feel like almost anything would be better than suction at this point. Yeah, it was, a leak was a big problem, and, you know, it's right, because suction, it's, if it doesn't suck, it sucks, and if it's sucking, it's good. Um, like you needed to have vacuum for it to work. And what drove the whole vacuum endeavor was just the fact that we could suck onto the hab to climb. And that drove the whole trident um, effort. Because once you have vacuum for the climb, might as well use it 
and all the other places. So that, that makes drove. Sense. And now that we've done it and we kind of know the nuances of it, we could probably implement it again without mm-hmm. too much trouble. But the learning curve is huge to find yeah. the right motor and to find all the seals. But mm-hmm. well, the suction cup design was iterated on so many times. Um, what else? The tubes? Oh, yeah. We changed the tubes on the Trident a lot. Mm-hmm. We always for them. Um, little little details on the suction See, cups. See, that pose would always break. Yeah. 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 A, lot of, a lot of finicky stuff that can go wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Lots of points of failure. All right. Uh, next question comes from Aditya from 900. Asks, what do you use for project management, making sure that tasks get completed and everyone knows what needs to be done on a given day? Um, and like, you know, in general, like other teams use like Slack or Discord or other things like that. Do you guys take, use anything like that? Yeah, we take students and put them in precarious situations like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, do you, yes. do you, oh, no, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Robert. Go ahead, Robert. Um, the, the software team uses Slack. Um, and so we have Slack channels for different projects. Um, hooked up hooked up to github as well so we'll get notifications there um but we tried um using there's a project management feature in github this year and that didn't really work out that well for us Uh, we have about three or four i think four or five students working um working on this software and so i was i worked with another student on the robot and so it was just the two of us and we most of the projects we just talked about and if we showed up every night and worked for several hours and we just we just kind of plowed through those projects gotcha yeah i think people would be surprised we don't have like the software team is way better at it than the mechanical side we don't have like an org chart or anything like that and we just come in and it's like this is behind we need to work on it and we're gonna go um just put tons of hours into it all right uh, next question comes from Nathan from 3656, and uh, they're asking, who were your favorite teams to play with and why, and which teams do you want to play with in the future and why? So maybe you guys can all give like a quick answer on your, your thought on that one, maybe. Maybe start with Roberts. Oh. <laughs> um, maybe not. Let's start with Corey. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Um, playing with the Poofs was fantastic. Uh, that was our first time to Einstein and having their like senior members there and being there before was a huge help in understanding how that happens. So poos are fantastic. If I could play with anybody, it would probably be OP robotics at this point. Haven't played with them yet. Cool. Um, I really, really enjoyed playing with rush last year. Um, my favorite memory was, us almost tipping over on Einstein and then Rush saving us. Um, and I will thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I enjoyed playing with teams uh, who aren't, uh, who weren't at our worlds, uh, like Jack in the Bot and 118. They, like playing with them was just new and it was interesting to like see I don't know like what other uh things I could uh do I don't know no that's good yeah it's it's very rare that uh us north champs teams get to see the south champ teams so it's always good when you get a chance um all right uh next question comes from Stell from 217 uh, they ask, what was the turning point in the team's history that helped you start being able to con- be consistent and successful? Um, so I guess we kind of talked about this, but, um, you know, are there any other like little, little tricks that your team kind of does that you don't think anyone else really is doing that maybe you think kind of sets you apart a little bit? Is there any questions, um, later in the forum that talk about, cause this might be a good time to talk that Roberts that you can talk about the, um, the pit check with the um, automation. I think there's a question about that. There, there is, there's, but why don't we, yeah, so why don't yeah. we talk about that right now? That's sure. huge, it's important. Um, yeah, so that's the health check. We, we call it the health check, and um, yeah, we run it between every match. Um, we'll run it before matches, before lunch, after lunch, and it, what it, the way we do it, we run, we set voltages, it's open loop control, so 
we run each talent at a percent um, and then we measure the current draw and the encoder speed and we all regenerate an HTML report and so it's all nice color coded um, and so if there's anything wrong if there's outside of the set range then we highlight the little box red and so it's really easy to quickly look at the at the page and identify which talons are behaving or which motors are behaving weird um, and we can really quickly diagnose problems find di and diagnose problems that way and it saved us so many times um, all the code is actually on github right now there's a we're baking it into third coast right now um, so you can go take a look at that and then there's also a, a health check test bed um, that we're using to test the health check right now as well so yeah, so all that's on our GitHub, and it's yeah. really, really useful. It's found bad motors. It's found encoders that weren't plugged in. It's what makes the robot consistent match to match is running this health check. Yeah, super smart. Um, the next question, yeah. So, so the the we've just to give the person credit that was Tom from uh, 5460, the other strike strike zone uh, that asked about your uh, system check. So there you go. There's the answer for that one. Uh, next question is Kenneth from 930 is asking, what types of things does your team do to recruit new students? And is there anything unique you do to maintain consistency and sustainability? Sure, you want to talk about the uh, open houses? Uh, yeah, uh, we have um, open houses uh, after competition season uh, to, and we pass out flyers uh, in our schools and other places and it basically helps kids like come to our space check out what we are um, and it really helps recruit because they can actually see what we do instead of just hearing about it and then blindly going in we um, we all we can also what we do is we'll have all sorts of little projects we're working on on display we'll have our robots up we'll have videos going um, and we people can sign up add their emails to email lists um, and we reach out to people that way. Um, we also heavily recruit at our own schools. So we'll put up, yeah, as Shearson, we'll put up flyers. Um, and we just, because we're not associated with the school, we have to be really active in recruiting. And so that's a really critical part to every member's role. Um, to add on to that, we also run uh, a middle school program and a late elementary program as well. So we are getting students younger um, before they decide what their preferences will be in high school, whether they're prep or nerd or whatever they're going to end up being. So before they think it's uncool, we're kind of talking to them earlier um, to, as a feeder programs. Do you guys do, oh, uh, do you use like what robotics programs do you guys use in those lower level programs? It's a loaded question. Uh, is it is it a loaded question? <laughs> it's, um, we run a NRG program for the oh, fifth and okay. sixth grade that we adopted from Code Red Robotics 2771. And that's what I think Tyler has now on the screens. Um, cool. We ran FTC teams the past few years. This year, we're going to go to the VEX IQ platform for the middle school program. Um, it just has to do with the amount of students that are interested to provide robots to more kids. Cool. Awesome. Uh, the next question, right. um, it Here's was a long, team. long question, so we're kind of going to we're going to shorten it up a little bit. Uh, Bedman from Chief Delphi had a bunch of different kind of electrical questions. Some were kind of specific, uh, so we're going to kind of keep it a little more general. Uh, what process do you guys use to determine the layout and positioning of your electrical components on the robot? Is this done as an integral and fundamental part of the design process or is it kind of in an ad hoc manner? And then, like, you know, are there any special tricks or processes for electrical quality assurance, um, which maybe that kind of builds into the, the systems check you guys already kind of talked about. But, you know, any kind of electrical tips that you guys kind of use. Um, I'll start and then if anybody wants to add in, they can. Uh, we put in specifically where the battery, the PDP and the Robo Rio are going to live. Um, everything else gets double sided sticky tape onto the robot. Mm hmm. Wherever it fits. <laughs> Wherever it fits. Typically, the closer the motor controller to the motor is, the better. Um, a, lot, a lot of it gets, gets added on post. Yeah. It ends up being really organized and really nice. It's thoughtful. Yeah. It's, like it's not just randomly put on. It's, it's, it's in a thoughtful. Um, another big thing is we don't use connectors. We solder everything. Okay. 
Yeah, that was yeah. kind of built into his question. So yeah. that that's a good tip. A little more reliable probably than relying on a connector that's not going to disconnect. So yeah. cool. Uh, all right. And then our last question we're going to have before uh, we do our drawing for our first giveaway. So a reminder for everybody, if you want a chance to get that first giveaway, this is your last chance. So put in uh, our keyword, which was sideways matters. Sorry, I had to scroll up there. Uh, so sideways matters in the chat. Make sure you're following if you want a chance. Uh, our last question that was submitted is from X Nated uh, from my own team, 33. Uh, he wants to know, what are the chances of you guys building a whole new robot for championship next year, assuming the rules allow it, since there will be no more bag? Uh, do you expect anything drastic like that to be done, or are you guys generally going to stick with how you're doing things now i don't i don't know we haven't talked about it <laughs> we don't, um no i don't think we would do that right now i don't think okay. we'd, if, if there wasn't a, i'm looking at this year like if, if we didn't have a bag this year um I, he actually yeah that was that was the second part of his question i forgot to read it was if yeah. there was no bag in 19 how much would have been different i don't think i think it would have been the exact same mm -hmm. coming in maybe yeah. those Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live and independent.